Canada once again to tell us how to deal with marijuana and that we better keep it illegal and a crime in our country. And as Canadians, I think we've had enough of Americans coming to our country and telling us how to deal with our marijuana policy. Hell yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Woo! <laughs> and Patrick Kennedy and his group Smart Approaches to Marijuana are really promoting the continuation of this failed prohibition of marijuana, the failed war on marijuana that has been going on for over a hundred years in this country and the U.S. and around the world, a failed war that has not reduced marijuana use, that has not reduced the harm of marijuana use, and that has succeeded only in criminalizing and imprisoning large numbers of people who do not deserve to be punished at all. And now Sam Canada wants to tweak that a little bit. They say if we just tweak prohibition a little bit, then it's going to work fine. We know things haven't worked too well for the last hundred years, but they want to make a few little fixes. And the fixes they propose will actually make things worse, not better, for marijuana users and for everybody in our province and in our country. And their proposal is that they want marijuana users to be fined and then treated for their marijuana addiction. They want forced treatment for marijuana users. All right, the nice and hotel. It's not a good idea. The forced treatment is not going to benefit anybody. The vast, vast majority of marijuana users are occasional users who have no problem with their use. The vast majority of heavy marijuana users do so because of a medical need of some sort. And the idea that a marijuana addiction treatment program is the solution is simply wrong and inaccurate and is going to cause a lot of harm. You can bring that mic up if you want to come set that up. That's fine. Go ahead. I can take a minute to let you get set up. Yeah, you want to plug it in here? Australia, right on. Yeah, sure. I'll be like, I'll be like, all right. All right. Is that mic? Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you one. We'll get plugged up. Yeah, yeah. So we're here today because this group, Smart Approaches to Marijuana, is hosting one of their major founders and sponsors, Patrick Kennedy. And he's yet another American politician coming to Canada telling us that we better not change our marijuana laws, we better not legalize marijuana, or things are going to go to hell. And in actual fact, we see when we look at the American states of Colorado and Washington, especially Colorado, where legalization is in full force, we are actually seeing that legalization has only been in place for a short period of time, and yet crime rates are dropping in Colorado. People there support legalization more now than they did when the vote happened. And things are actually going really well. They're generating millions of dollars in tax revenue, and all the scary proposals that were put forward are not happening. And in fact, things are getting better and better for people in Colorado. And this matches earlier studies done in the U.S. where they looked at states that have legalized marijuana, medical marijuana, over the last 20 years. And these studies show that wherever medical marijuana is legalized, crime rates also drop. And so legalizing marijuana has many benefits, and one is that it will reduce other forms of crime in our society as well. But this idea that Sam Canada is putting forward, that there's such a thing as marijuana addiction, and they put this preposterous numbers out that one in six marijuana users is an addict. But if you look behind their numbers, they define a marijuana addict as someone who might just smoke one joint a week. And clearly, that is not addiction. Even heavy marijuana users are not addicted in the classical sense. There's no withdrawal symptoms. Nobody is prostituting themselves or stealing to get their marijuana. It simply really does a disservice to people who are addicted to serious issues and who have alcoholism or prescription drug addiction, or addiction to other illegal drugs. It does a disservice to call marijuana users addicts when there's others who are really facing very serious addiction issues. And Patrick Kennedy should know better. As someone who's been very open about his own addiction issues with alcohol and with prescription drugs, I don't know why he's going after the marijuana culture and marijuana users when that is the one substance that he hasn't used and which hasn't caused him any personal problems. And if you look at our society, the vast majority of people that use cannabis have no other problems with it. Cannabis does not produce crime. In fact, people often choose cannabis instead of alcohol. 
and in my dispensaries that we run in Vancouver, my medical marijuana dispensaries, I see every day how people are able to stop their use of prescription drugs because they have access to this healing herb. Woo! So if we want to reduce alcohol use, if we want to reduce prescription drug use, if we want a society that's safer and that treats people like the adults that we are, and if we want to try to keep cannabis out of the hands of minors, then the best way to do that is through legalization and regulation for adults. And this forced treatment idea is only going to benefit one group of people, and that is the rehab clinic that have a contract to deal with the forced treatment of marijuana users. And that is a gold mine. Can you imagine getting the contract in Vancouver to treat marijuana addiction? Some of these clinics, including one that's sponsoring today's event, they charge $20,000 for a 90-day stay. That would be printing gold. And yet, it's not going to stop a single person from using marijuana. Even putting marijuana users to the most rigorous forms of <laughs> addiction treatment is not going to benefit or make them stop using marijuana. Studies show that well over 90% of marijuana users who are in prison for their use continue to use when they get out of prison. Forced treatment is only going to turn people into liars who will tell the authorities what they want to hear until they can get out of that program and get back home and hit the bomb. And, and you know, the idea that marijuana produces addiction and that we need treatment is, is very backwards because if we were to add, propose that for alcohol users or for tobacco users, and there's no question that alcohol and tobacco are far more addictive than even the worst nightmare scenario of what marijuana could be. And yet, do we want to have a society where everyone with alcohol in their breath goes to forced alcoholism treatment and forced into AA? No. Where everyone who uses tobacco is forced into tobacco re-education programs? No. No. In fact, we've drastically reduced tobacco use in our society without criminalizing anybody, without putting anybody in prison. We've done it through education and awareness. And if they believe that, uh, that marijuana is harmful, and I would disagree with them on that, but if you believe that marijuana use is harmful, the way to reduce that use is not through mandatory treatment, and it's not through punishment, it's through civil dialogue and conversation, it's through making your point. If you think marijuana is harmful, let's have a conversation and talk about that. But these folks in Stamps Canada and Patrick Kennedy do not want open dialogue. They promoted today's event as an event where people can come and, and, and uh, engage in a conversation about marijuana, and yet they forbade anybody from attending if they said they support legalization. We yeah. tried to buy tickets for this event, and they said everything was fine. When they heard my name, Dana Larson, uh-oh, we've sold out. Sorry, you can't come. <laughs> Another friend of ours called in. They said, what group are you from? He said, I'm not from any group. I'm just a citizen who cares about marijuana issues. So Pamela McCall, the organizer, said, well, do you support legalization? He said, yes, I do. She said, well, you're not welcome at our event. This is not for you. And he said, well, that's kind of odd. She said, screw you. And she hung up on him. <laughs> so that's the kind of open dialogue and debate they want to have. You know, I've never kicked someone out. I've done hundreds and hundreds of talks about marijuana around the province. I've had protesters come to my events once in a while. I've never once forbade them from coming. I've never once kicked somebody out because they had an alternate point of view. Our movement and our, our culture is always happy to have a dialogue about this issue. But the prohibitionists do not want open conversation. They do not want open dialogue. They refuse to debate us. And I put out now that I'm willing to debate the folks from Sam Canada, Pamela Bacall or Patrick Kennedy or anybody else that you want. <laughs> that debate, and I encourage them to come and step forward, but I have a feeling they're not going to accept my offer. <laughs> because it's very hard often to get people to come out in public and say that they're going to stand up for prohibition. They only want to do it in their own little meetings, but they don't have any conversation or real dialogue happening. And you know, there's an irony that we're meeting here today in Gastown, and near Chinatown and Water Street, because Canada's war on drugs began just a few blocks away. And they would have you think that our war on drugs and the war on marijuana is based on science and based on logic and based on some kind of study of the rational harms of marijuana use. But in fact, Canada's war on drugs and our war on marijuana is entirely based in racism against minority groups. Our war on drugs and the war on marijuana in Canada began because white workers did not want opium-smoking Chinese workers to compete with them. And it's through racism and, and uh, cultural attacks on these groups that we have this war in our country. 
every study that's been done of any repute in our country or elsewhere around the world has shown that marijuana should be legalized. And just a few years ago, Canada Senate put out a report with a, a Senate committee led by conservative senators and made up of conservative and liberal bipartisan senators. They came out with the recommendation that the war on marijuana is an absolute failure, that it causes a great deal of harm and suffering and misery in Canada and around the world. And they proposed that marijuana be legal to purchase for all Canadians over the age of 16 years old. And the Senate is not known as a, a group of rabble-rousers or a group of people that uh, comes to those kind of conclusions easily. Uh, and so I think that that's what we're moving forward. We should be looking at the science, looking at the research, not promoting the idea that marijuana is a terribly addictive drug that destroys our society. That is absolute bullshit. And I, I am quite confident that if we could engage in a rational debate with these people, if they would let us uh, share the stage with them, they would also quickly come to see that their arguments are very weak and that the war on marijuana is a failure. Patrick Kennedy himself, in a debate on the Colbert Report, talking to Colbert, he talked about his own problems with alcohol, with prescription drugs. He said he didn't use marijuana, didn't smoke it, because he was an asthma user and couldn't smoke it. And he said maybe if he'd eaten marijuana, maybe he wouldn't have moved on to other drugs. And Colbert said, so you mean if marijuana was legal, then maybe you wouldn't have had all those problems? And he said, yeah, but it's good that I had those problems, because it showed me what an addict I was. If I'd only smoked marijuana, I wouldn't have realized what, what an addict I was. But that logic is very twisted and very dangerous. And the fact is that marijuana, not only is marijuana not addictive, marijuana can help treat and cure addiction. Marijuana, for many people, is a substitute for more harmful substances. Many people who have problems with alcohol or prescription drugs or illegal drugs turn to cannabis and they find that using cannabis helps stabilize them, helps keep them straight, and lets them enjoy a much better quality of life. And so it's time for us as Canadians to build a marijuana policy and a drug policy built in Canada. We're leading that here in, in Vancouver and British Columbia. If we're going to follow the example of the Americans, let's follow the example of Colorado and Washington, yeah. where the people of those states, where the people in those states stood up to politicians like Patrick Kennedy, where they stood up to their weak will leaders, and they implemented positive marijuana policy. And let's look to the example of California and Washington and Oregon and the 20 other American states that have also legalized medical marijuana in the same way and recognize the immense benefits of this plant as a healing herb to treat a wide variety of ailments. You know, Patrick Kennedy says marijuana users are addicts. I see marijuana users as people who want to relax, who really want to enjoy themselves, and people who are often treating very serious ailments and who want to ensure the quality of their health. To call those people addicts is a terrible insult. And really, Patrick Kennedy and Sam Canada owe marijuana users across Canada an apology. And they owe real drug addicts and real alcoholics an apology as well for comparing these two things together when there is simply no comparison to be made. And so it's wonderful to have this nice little crowd here, you know, getting people together at 11 or 12 o'clock on a Monday afternoon uh, isn't always the easiest, or sorry, on a Friday afternoon, <laughs> or on a Monday afternoon, it isn't always the easiest thing. But, uh, but, you know, people in Vancouver especially are very passionate about this issue. And if people want to come to our city and tell us how to deal with marijuana, when we have worked out a system in our city that, that works very well for us, thank you very much. Vancouver is leading Canada in terms of tolerance and support. We have a broad network of medical marijuana dispensaries. The VPD wisely and sagely treat marijuana possession as a very low priority. The mayor of our city has made it clear that he supports progressive marijuana policies that include decriminalization and legalization. And uh, we don't, you know, we're happy to have that debate, but we don't want American politicians coming to Vancouver and telling us how to do things in our city and in our country. Thank you very much. We've had enough of that over the years.